Well, it's been five years since I last made a video on the building of this house. And I, I ought to explain how the video came about. Originally, it was just a home movie for our own entertainment and a record of the building of the house. But a number of people um, have, have, that have seen the video have said, why don't you publish it on YouTube? And, of course, it had many scenes of personal nature with family and friends and things like that, which I didn't really want to put on, onto YouTube because it wasn't relevant. So what I've done, I've edited, or what I did, I should say, I edited down some two and a half hours worth of video, and I think we ended up with about 40 minutes, something like that. So there's a lot of stuff that wasn't put on there, but I have to say nothing really, really relevant. Some things were just badly shot, uh, shaky camera and out of focus and stuff like that. Because in the early days, I didn't edit anything. What, what was in the camera was what there was, and it was just simply put onto a DVD for our own amusement. Anyway, a number of people have commented that um, they'd like to see how the house is somewhat later. So this is an attempt to do just that. Now I'm going to take you round and show you some of the mistakes I've made and some of the things that I've in, I will endorse and praise if you like. We've not had any disasters since the ones that you've seen hopefully on the original video which I have to say an amazing amount of people have watched and by and large I've had good comments about what we've done and the way it's been presented so thank you to all the people that have done that um, I have had some adverse comments and I have to say mostly from Kiwi builders um, who think that um, and comments such as if you don't like it go back to the UK um, which is a very helpful thing to say and thank you for those that bothered to do that but I have to say New Zealand is a great place to live and whereas everything is not perfect but then it isn't perfect in anywhere on, on the planet it's a nice safe country to live in and by and large the climate is good today it's um, um, early January and it's um, getting a bit warm out here. I, I came out earlier hoping the sun wouldn't uh, come out quite yet but it's come out now and already we've got 28 degrees and we're expecting somewhere around about 30 later on today which is a bit warm. Anyway we will make a start and um, I'll show you around the house. Stay with me. Now one of the most controversial things that we've done here is the use of UPVC windows and doors. This is the one item I've had probably more comments from than anything else and they're mainly from people that know of their reputation from 20 odd years ago when to be completely honest with you they were rubbish and they suffered from deterioration from UV light which we have a lot of in New Zealand and not surprisingly people remember the bad things but UPVC windows are in use all over Europe and certainly in the UK and I believe Canada and, uh, and similar places in New Zealand they are still very rare now as you can see it's still white. This is just a piece off one of the windows. Um, all I can say about it, it needs cleaning. <laughs> uh, oh dear, just, just noticed we've got a wopsy going in there. Look at that. Well you can't see it, but there's a wasp just gone inside there. And they kind of like those. It's a it's a it's an exit for moisture. Here he comes. Oops. Yes. He nearly stung yours truly, so I wouldn't have been impressed by that. 
As I was saying, before I was rudely interrupted by that wasp, this is one area where I am so pleased that I pushed for the windows. We've not had any issues with damp, moisture, and they are they reduce the sound beautifully. This is one of the windows in the lounge, and um, yes, I can see it's a bit dirty there, but I haven't cleaned this or attempted to clean this, especially for this video. What you see is what it is. It's five years old. These are the fixing clips, and this is one reason why you get a nice tight finish. You can see a seal here, and if I move the camera a little bit, you can see there's another seal along here on the outside. So when you pull the window to, you've got the seal here and the seal behind it, which you can't see. I can show you easier on this is the front door and it's got the normal lock in in the center but when you go to lock it watch here that lifts up and there's four of those that slide into these receptacles here even the front door is double glazed here and this piece here is the double insulated panel it has steel inside it to reinforce it and i can't emphasize the fact that if you're building in new zealand build with upvc builders will try and talk you out of it telling you how wonderful aluminium is but aluminium is one of the best conductors of heat you can get so the problem will be if these parts are made of aluminium the temperature here will be exactly the same as the temperature on the outside. So if it's zero degrees outside, which it very regularly is in New Zealand, this side will be a few degrees higher, probably say five degrees. So if your house is internally heated at 20 degrees Celsius, this is all Celsius by the way, um, what it means is as soon as any air lands on this, which of course it will, um, condensation will build up. And in the morning, down on the floor there, there will be a nice puddle of water, which in the case of a wooden floor like this, it will rot the floor, and it does. Now, I've lived in three standard aluminium type window houses. The first one, when we first came to New Zealand 15, no, 16 years ago, was just single glazing and I have to say we've never been so cold we had three dehumidifiers in the house and the still water pissed down the windows it was awful it reminded me of UK in 1950 now you can get aluminium windows in New Zealand with a heat break on them but they're still made of aluminium and they do a half job there's just basically um, insulation in between the outer aluminium and the inner but because that you can't just put aluminium insulation and aluminium it, there is aluminium linking it and they sort of do the job but they actually cost more than new PVC windows which do the job properly if you're building go and look at it first this house is five years old and there's no issues, there's no, well obviously there's no rotting because nothing to rot. Um, but UPVC hasn't turned yellow, which everybody said it would. This is another thing that um, I would recommend. And I've been so pleased with this, but it's such a simple thing. It's an induction hob. Um, it wasn't very expensive. I mean, it, it, Bico is a relatively well-known brand in New Zealand but it has been completely fault free I can't tell you how how pleased I am the main thing is it cooks at high speed and it's so easy to clean because there's no lumps and bumps on it we had gas previously and when you have to cook uh, when you have to clean the, the gas hob 
it takes a pro about an hour to take all those bits off and mess about what most builders will do and they will use something that looks identical to this and it's called a halogen hob and they are total crap um, <laughs> I'm sorry, there's no other word I can use. They are not the same. People don't understand, but they are basically an element um, that shines through a piece of glass. Um, and the hot plate, or this, this piece here, actually gets, I was going to say red hot, but it does glow red because the element does. And so when you, when you use the thing, when you turn it on, the element starts to heat, then it heats this surface and that's transferred, that transfers the heat to the pan or whatever you've got on there. This surface on an induction cooker does not get hot. Now, I have to, I have to clarify that, but if I turn this on now, I could put my hand on there and there will be no heat whatsoever because it doesn't induce into you or anything other than steel or a similar kind of pan. That is the only downside if you've already got loads of cookware. Aluminium won't work. It has to, as the name says, induction. It, it transfers electrical power via coils. Nothing heats this surface at all. The heat or the electricity is purely induced into the base of the pan and that's what gets hot so if you take your pan off there's no this doesn't still burn and fizz or anything like that it actually switches the power off so if you go to tip the saucepan away or you forget that will be um, switched off so to speak now obviously when I said I have to clarify whether this gets hot or not it will take heat from the bottom of the pan, which is probably full of boiling water or something, and induce some onto this surface, which is a glass type. Obviously it's not glass, it's some derivative that doesn't crack or anything like that. And so from that point of view, this will get hot. And after the pan's been there and you've been cooking for a while, you wouldn't want to put your hand on there. It's high efficiency. Gas, if you think about gas, most of the gas comes out the sides and goes up and heats the room. This doesn't produce any heat at all. It is purely induced into the cooking. So buy yourself one of these. Do not, please do not buy or let your builder put in a um, induction hob. They are awful. I've had to put the kettle here, but because this is black, my camera wouldn't focus on it and it, however close I got to it or however far it wouldn't focus. I just wanted to show you what this looks like after five years and yes we do use it every day. Um, as you can see it, it's it, there's no there's a few very light scratches on it. It would be silly to say there's no scratches on it but um, if you're careful and um, treat it with respect it will last you for many many years and you won't have to Cleaning on this takes three minutes to clean the whole thing, even if you've spilt something. Because this doesn't get red hot, it doesn't cook the food onto the stove. Now the other thing I'm very keen on is LED lighting. I've had all sorts of people say that we'll all go blind and, and things like this, but when I first have this house built, LED lighting was just coming in and the fact that we put it in, I hesitate to say it was a bit revolutionary, but most builders were still putting in those awful bloody down lights. Um, if you're not familiar with them and you're outside of New Zealand, it's basically a fitting that's open all the way around so all your heat goes up through these bulbs. Uh, sockets and all the rubbish all the insects and cold wind comes down and they were still fitting these and they just put an ordinary bulb in there um, 
They are awful in all respects. So I'm pleased to say that now most builders are fitting LED lights, usually underpowered in my opinion. Um, I guess it's because they're cheap, but um, that's something else you need to make sure of. If your builder's going to fit a particular type of fitting, get one from him and say, I want one of these fittings, put it on a power point and see what the light is. And also check the colour of it. Now, in my opinion, in bathrooms and kitchens, you need a white light because then everything is the same colour and it looks like the light from outside. And there's a fly in here that is really annoying me. <laughs> I've got all the doors and things open at the moment because I'm in and out. Anyway, <laughs> I won't trouble you with flies, but it's annoying. And generally in the lounge and bedrooms, a softer, more yellow light, round about the three, three and a half thousand Kelvin would be the light that I would probably recommend for bedrooms. But somewhere in the five to six thousand K is what I would use in the kitchens and bathrooms and any cupboards. If you've got uh, walk-in wardrobes or anything like that, you want the light to be natural. You don't want it yellow because if you're trying to choose what to, to wear, uh, <laughs> you want to be able to see the things in the correct light. So that's what I would recommend. Not a mistake. Every light in this house now is LED. There is no halogen. Whatever you do, don't put halogen lights in. Some builders are still putting these. And again, they are crap. They're very inefficient. They get very hot. The transformers burn out fairly re regularly. And the, 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 the light they give, particularly in bathrooms, is yellow and it's just so awful. Anyway, I did promise my wife I wouldn't rant too much on this video, but I do. It just annoys me that builders will put in what they've always put in, rather than looking around and thinking, hmm, my, my customer might prefer that, but they don't even give you the options. Now this next item is the kitchen sink. Now if this area is what you do most of your washing up in, excluding the dishwasher of course, don't put the steel ones in there because they scratch so easily and look really bad. As I say this is five years old and this is a composite stone. It's actually, this particular one is made in Germany and again when we bought it it was quite hard to find such things in New Zealand. But now I've seen them in places like um, Mitre 10 and I'm not sure about Bunnings, but easy to clean and a variety of colours are available. Now this is the stone worktop. Again, I'm not going to go into too much detail on this because it's almost common sense. Use composite stone. Don't use timber or composite materials like that because when they get scratched water goes inside and they swell and that's the end of it this stuff will last probably longer than you will now just while i'm showing you this i've picked a dark part of the room um, now unfortunately the camera is going to compensate for what i'm going to do but i want to show you the effect of putting white LED lighting on. Now you can see the colour of it, once the camera has adjusted itself, is still the same. So that's why you should use white light in your kitchen. A quick talk now about heating and cooling your home. Now this is a heat pump. These are the most efficient way to heat or cool your home. It's the only type of heating that actually gives you more heat than you put in. Now, I know if you've done a bit of science, you're gonna say that's impossible. 
but it's actually not impossible. If you consider the ways that you can heat your home, now the worst way, in my opinion, is a wood burning stove. Apart from the fact they can be very nice, but you'll find dirt and dust comes off them and will end up in the home and you will be breathing it. However well it's maintained, you can always smell them in the house. Always. I've never been in a house yet where you cannot smell if these things are in use. They also pollute all the air outside, which is absolutely appalling. So that is not something I would re recommend. The other kind of heating is an electric fire of any sort. Um, basically, very inefficient because let's say the thing is rated at three kilowatts. That's how much power it's drawing from the mains. And obviously it can't be 100% efficient, but you can ignore for, for all intents and purposes the inefficiencies of it. So three kilowatts in gives you roughly three kilowatts out. And that applies to all types of electric heaters, whether it's a blow heater, or it has an element that glows red, or anything like that, or even an oil-filled one. They all never give out more than you put in. The heat pump, on the other hand, because it doesn't burn electricity to make the heat, what actually uses the power is a compressor similar to that you, uh, what you have in your refrigerator which sits in the unit outside and it compresses the gas and it works in a similar way that you know if you get a can of aerosol deodorant or something and you spray it the can gets cold doesn't it and it's the similar way that a heat pump works so all you're actually doing is compressing gas in the unit outside and releasing it in the unit inside which also has a fan which uses electricity and that's virtually all there is to it but because of that the fans don't use that much power and this particular unit that um, you can see here which we have covering the whole um, kitchen family room and um, well, yeah, the whole area here, which is a large area. This is actually a six kilowatt unit. Now, that does not draw six kilowatts. Six kilowatts is the heat output um, under ideal conditions. And we won't go into efficiencies, but bear in mind, if it's colder outside, the efficiency does drop, particularly if you're trying to heat the house inside, but it's still way more efficient. Um, than any other kind of heater and this actually pulls in um, about two and a half to three kilowatts so you are getting virtually double the power out of it and of course it also has the benefit as it's a heat pump and not an air conditioner two very subtle differences you can also cool your house with it with a similar or almost similar effect three kilowatts consumption and that is of course when it's running flat out because once the temperature has reached whatever you want it throttles back and might just be um, drifting around the one and a half two kilowatt region so that's what i would well that's what i have used and that's what i would recommend you use don't be tempted to underpower them Again, a builder will put one of these things in and it will be a cheap brand, usually, um, and it will be underpowered for the job. Now, we do get some very cold weather. We're in a place called um, near Hamilton here, and it, it can easily get down to minus five degrees, and that's cold. So you do need a, a, a heat pump which is capable of giving a decent power something you won't regret and you can put a small one in your bedrooms I mean we have a smaller it's a, a 3k one 
in the bedroom and um, we turn it on 10-15 minutes before we go to bed and it just sucks the humidity out of the air and obviously cools it so it's pleasant because humidity is what is bad in New Zealand and in many countries it's not so much the heat once you remove the moisture from the air the air feels very nice it's like if you use your heat pump in the car it's not so much the temperature but you can feel you can breathe better now we're in the bathroom now so slightly echoey I want to talk to you about toilets I know it's not a subject that many people want to talk about and your builder will never mention it you will get a toilet and it's usually one made in China as indeed this one is and this suffers from one thing in particular now we all know what toilets are for and we all have them so I don't need to go into the nitty-gritty of what to do but the current trend is to have a very small area for the water and for your business to drop into that's as far as I'm going to go I would recommend that you look for a toilet with a much bigger water pool than that because you'll find yourself cleaning this type of small water bowl every time you use it that is too small and it's because it's the current trend many toilets are like that but you need to look for an older one and they have a much bigger water bowl it's something that people never think about other than that the toilet is fine but get a lid that does this you will never regret that particularly if you've got kids then you don't get that enormous crash every time they throw the uh, seat down now while we're in the bathroom this is something you don't see much in New Zealand and in fact in many countries in Europe you'll see them everywhere it's for watching your bum and other bits that you might have now these are relatively expensive compared to the price of a toilet when you think I don't know why they are I think it's because they're largely less common but you will never ever regret buying one of those if you think about it and we don't want to think about it too much but you use the toilet and you, you wipe yourself with paper now imagine you're outside and you touch some dog poo or something like that you'll instantly go in the house and wash your hands won't you and yet when you use the toilet yourself you wipe yourself with paper but you don't wash yourself uh, to me it's just a mystery that people can go around uh, unwashed when they've been to the toilet that is perfect buy yourself a bidet we've got one in in both bathrooms and uh, one of those things that once you've used it you will never regret buying one lastly while we're in the bathroom this is the extract fan and I'm only showing you this for one simple reason normally when you turn the power on and off if you're like me when you come into the bathroom there's two things you want to extract um, obviously anything you're doing in the toilet and you also want to extract steam and humidity from your shower or even just your basic washing so you turn the thing on and when you leave the room you turn it off and most of the time this goes off instantly now for about $25 New Zealand dollars you can get a little device that goes into the power socket here's the power and when I turn it on you can hear the extract but when I turn the power off i.e. you've just left the room it stays on and it's adjustable not user adjustable but your electrician or if you're smart yourself can preset it I've got mine set to um, 10 minutes so when you leave the room after the shower or using the toilet it literally 
clears the room of humidity and any smells that you might accidentally have made. Apart from the ladies, of course, that don't make any smell. Another small but very important thing is don't let your builder skimp on PowerPoints. You can never, ever have enough. Now, this is one of the bedrooms, and I have got a double socket on both the front and back walls. And believe it or not, we still run out of sockets occasionally. So, as a minimum of any room, have four double power points. Put in the sort of places where you're going to need them. Just a passing thought, by the way, if you have the UPVC windows and doors, you will not need dehumidifiers. And you will not need these, there's, there's companies in New Zealand that put these so-called fresh air vents in. But you will not need those if you insulate your house properly. Now we've gone to great effort here to, if you saw the first video, insulate the house. And I've had comments from people in Canada and the like saying what we put in wouldn't even make the ratings in Canada. This is true, but you have to look at the country you're in. Canada is a very cold country or can be in places, so you will need better insulation. We're in the North Island here and generally it's, it's classed as semi-tropical. But the better the insulation, particularly in the walls and roof, the cooler your house will be. People always think that insulation is purely to keep heat in, but it's also to keep heat out. So on a hot day, um, the air inside the house will maintain that temperature, um, particularly if, you, and if you've got a particularly aspect of sun just pull your curtains so that the sun doesn't come streaming through. I know that goes against the grain. That you want the sun coming in. But um, if you want to stay cool at no cost, I mean, it's easy to have all the heat coming in and then put all your heat pumps on. But um, it's, you're using a hammer to crack a nut, which is... Um, is that a saying or have I just invented that? I don't know. Let's go outside. Now behind that lot are our water tanks and the um, poo or worm farm. The water is collected from the roof from the white pipe that you can see there and there are about six of those all taking water from the roof and they take it unfiltered into the main tank. These are the two water tanks that we collect all our water from. And with those two tanks, bear in mind there's only the two of us here. Um, sorry about the wind, it's just getting a bit gusty. We have never run out of water. She's standing on one of the water tanks now, so we're right up high and it will be a bit windy. But that is the water pump. That takes the water from the tank and takes it into the garage which I'll show you in a minute. There's also an output on here which we use for watering the plants, that blue pipe. So that comes straight from the pump and we use it for watering the garden. Now while I'm waiting for my coffee to cool down I'm just going to take a break here and talk to you about a couple of other things that comments that I've had. A few people have said they can build a house much better than this one. Well of course they can. I built this, when I say I, another question that's come up by the way is did I project engineering it? No I didn't. I'm just an ordinary guy that has some fairly fixed views about what a house should have in it. This is an ordinary house and I'm an ordinary person. I'm not rich, I'm a pensioner. 
There are many houses in New Zealand which have cost 10 times what this costs. I'm not going to go into prices because the price we paid for this land, um, you, couldn't, you couldn't get a, a, a toilet for that now. I mean, it was just, we, we were very lucky we got the land at a good price. And the house was built for a good price. This, this house, after five years, is worth more than double what we paid for it. Anyway, I digress. What we wanted to do is to put the best things in the house that we could afford. Now, we went for a high stud, so it gives you a feeling of roominess. But to me, that's just, that costs us very little more because you're only paying for that little bit more wall around the house. And so it's, it's a quite a low cost in compared with just making the standard height ceiling. The ingredients that we've put in have cost a little bit more, particularly the insulation, but we spent probably about I don't know, maybe five thousand dollars more on insulation but when you're building a house five thousand dollars is not a lot of money I mean it sounds a lot when you say five thousand dollars but it will never be cheaper than putting it in when you build anything that you add later will cost you a lot of money and will be inherently difficult because people have got to go up in the roof and by now the ceiling's on and things like that. So when you're building, get all the things. Think about what you're going to put in the house and what you'd like in it. Please don't skimp on insulation. It's one of those things that you will regret instantly. And what you spend on insulation, you don't have to spend on house ventilation system like DV, something or other they call it, can't remember what it's called now. You just don't need them. Because in a, in a poorly constructed house uh, with, with, with very bad insulation and, and dare I say the magic windows, you will get huge amounts of condensation on your glasswork and on the on the um, aluminium frames and all of that gets dissolved into the air you will get mold everywhere on your curtains <clears throat> we have not got any mold we've not got any condensation we don't have any dehumidifiers in the previous house which again was a, a new house we we had um, that had double glazed windows, but it was the standard sort, with just the basic insulation that you can get away with in New Zealand, which is painfully inadequate, quite honestly. And then with all the um, light fittings, letting all the cold air in and stuff like that, the first job every morning used to be go round with a cloth, wiping up the windows and, and the floor and things like that. And a trick that, <coughs> Some builders do, knowing that they're building a shit house, they will put tiles right by and under the windows. So all the water that runs down will congregate on there and then run onto your carpet. But <laughs> anyway, so this house is not meant to be the best house in New Zealand. It was never planned to be and isn't. But when we look around the estate here, at other houses which have gone up, they still have the very basic ingredients in them, but they've got extra patio, um, windows that go from floor to the ceiling, um, and they'll have two ovens or three ovens instead of one. So they added value to the house, but they haven't made the house any better. This house stands up in comfort level to any that I've been in here, any price. Now, obviously, if you, if you don't insulate properly and you've spent all this money on a big house, you can still heat it, but instead of having a, a six kilowatt heat pump, you're gonna have to have three or four 
and then you're probably going to end up with 15 kilowatt heating. So I suppose it works on the basis if you can afford to spend huge sums of money on a house, the electricity bill isn't going to bother you. But that's the choice. But don't think if you're looking for houses, if you go and look for an existing one, that you see one that's really expensive, it's going to be any better than this one. Because the chances are it won't be. It'll have lots more gadgets in it. You'll have a, a barbecue outside that costs more than the whole kitchen. Anyway, that's enough ranting. I'm going to have my coffee now. <clears throat> I'm sorry I can't share it, but if you were here, I would. So cheers. We're in the garage now, and I just wanted to show you this. Uh, I can't get any closer other than zoom. Let's zoom a bit. Because my car's in the way, and I can't be bothered to move it, to be honest. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. This is what you get with amateur videos. That is the filtration plant for the water. The water comes in here and it goes through three different types of filter. Um, one gets rid of, this first one gets rid of largish peaches, bits of leaf and stuff like that. Um, that's, a, um, I can't remember which way around it is, but one of these is a charcoal filter and one of them is a very fine that takes away particulates and very small things. There's meters on here showing you the pressure. Comes out of the filters and goes into this, which is a, um, a UV steriliser. So if there's any germs or bacteria in there, this has a UV light that shines through the whole thing and sterilises the water. It then comes out here and goes into the general house system. This is the garage door. Um, it open, obviously, hence it's on the ceiling. Um, that is insulated as well, because if you've ever been in a garage with an uninsulated door, when the sun shines on that door, that temp, the garage will end up at about 35 degrees uh, centigrade. So it costs comparatively a little extra to insulate the garage door. Now the other thing we've done in the garage, which is unusual, we've insulated all the walls, external and internal, with the same standard as the rest of the house. And it does mean you could theoretically live in here. So if you had hundreds of guests and um, you wanted somewhere else for them to stay, you could put them in the garage. Get your builder to add about three meters all the way around your garage. This is the garage, you can see the front of the car here and it's an um, average size family car and there's my lawnmower and there's still a place there to work on the bench. Oh sorry about the squeaking. And um, the washing machine and the, the stuff like that and you can still get out from the door. If you go back to the original video, you'll see all these plants and things have grown. Before there was just bare soil up here. The grass needs cutting here. But all these trees and things have grown up really nicely. It looks very pleasant, I think. The last time I took some video here, it was all mud. So it's got some grass. I know it needs cutting, don't remind me. Well, it's getting hot out here, so I'm going in now. Um, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask or make comments. Preferably not nasty ones. I hope this has been an interesting update for you. And I'm sure there's many things I've left out, but it gives you a bit of an overview. And I hope it's been helpful. Thanks for watching.